Sorry about that. I'd like to call the December 6th uh, policy meeting to order. Let's see here. Roll call. Daniel Bailey. Daniel Bailey. Here. Tamika Vukovic is here. Uh, let's see here. First, next. Item is to approve the agenda. So moved. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, discussion items, review policy, a policy review. We have uh, first reading policies and I'm pulling them up for policy 361, 223, 347, 330, and 726. Um, Allison, how do you want to go about this? <clears throat> um, I'm thinking it probably would make the most sense. Danielle, you let me know. Um, so I, from the first, from the last board meeting, my feeling is that there were really, there was, I mean, we can look at the notes, but I think the only ones that we really needed to go deep into were 361 and 330. I think the board was pretty content on 223. 347 and 726. So unless you guys as a committee would have any feedback or um, any recommendations for those three, I think those could probably move to a second reading. Danielle, you were at the last meeting. I don't know what, don't know what your thoughts are on those three. Say it, so three, uh, non-discrimination, there were no comments, right? Independent no. educational evaluation, no comments. And was the other one? Oh, student? I'm sorry, there were two more. So then 347 student records. Uh huh. And then administrative professional development. I mean, I had one comment on that one, but I didn't know if you were open to that. You have it in your notes. I didn't know okay. if you were open to my yeah. comment on that. So that would be a quick, but um, I, yeah. So if, what I would like to do is we can move the ones that had no objection or just something that mm -hmm. we needed to, you know, just the, the notes. We move them as the first reading make a motion to um, approve them as the first reading, and then we can dive into the other ones. Yep, and Danielle, I'm totally fine with the bring the PD plan as part of the board calendar. Oh. So we, I can add that to the policy. Okay, yeah, then I would, if you're, if you plan to add that, then I think that could move as well. Okay. Okay, so could you please? Do you want me to make a motion? I would move. <laughs> Bless, you. Bless you. Sorry, Sorry hold on, let's keep going. I think oh. I will be making a motion to move policy 223, 347, 726, and policy no number named independent educational evaluation um, back to the board for its formal second reading. Is that yeah. And I second that. Okay. All right. All well, in favor? Or is it discussion? Katie, you have anything to say about this? <laughs> Rob's on too. Not really. No, well, he just. No. Right. Um, as a participant, Ben, do you have anything to say about any of these? You're still holding uh, 330 and uh, 361? Yep, for further. Yes. Discussion. Excellent. Rob, do you have anything to say on this? These ones that we're getting ready to move for the first reading. I will take that as a no. So all in favor of moving those um, policies as the first reading, please say aye. 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 220 motion is approved and those um, policies will go to the second reading at the next school board meeting. With the changes oh, to with the change uh, to right. two twenty three. Yep. Um. So let's go into which one do you want to start with, Allison? 
Um, Jenica, do you have a preference on which one you want to start with? Nope. So we'll start at the top. Um, 361. Okay, give me your spiel. Um, I can jump in. Um, so based off of the notes that were taken at the last meeting, um, I just want to kind of go through um, just so, some of um, the thoughts I had um, around some of them. So looking at um, bullet point eight, everyone has the notes, right? Mm -hmm. yep. All right. Looking at bullet point eight, um, I think that's great. We can easily change that to differentiation. Objectives to explicit instruction and differentiation, as noted in Allison's notes. Um, the second one, bullet point one, relevant research to cognitive um, psychology um, was the note um, that was taken. Um, I have a, some questions around that. I think it's important for us to have relevant research in there. Um, I think if we just have cognitive psychology, that limits us to one thing because there's a lot of different research. Like really, we should be looking at developmental research. We should be looking at educational research. We should be looking at a multitude of research when we're doing some of this. So we might wanna think about the wording around that um, to not leave out all other research. Um, the next one, facilitate an appropriate assessment, shifting that to formative and summative. Great idea. I think that should change. Um, extent to which the materials will actively engage with the content, encourage the learning and subject area. That's bullet point six. Another um, good suggestion. Um, I think those are the major suggestions. Then also thinking about equity around this. Um, and it in here it talked about um, having an equity checklist for our policies and procedures and all of that. I don't think this team at this time has an equity checklist for the policy at this point. Um, but I think once you do have a checklist for the policies and going, you know, this can always come back to the table. What I can tell you is that we utilize DPI's vision um, for our curriculum when we're doing it and equity as, is at the forefront and it's one of the lenses that we look through um, high quality you know curriculum with and that's when you're looking for high quality curriculum it should be equitable um, for students so I, I can say that but I do think policy wise once you do get that checklist it would be a good idea for us to kind of go through the policy mm -hmm. again with that lens and that checklist Jenica, can I add to that? Um, so the other piece I was going to add is through the equity committee, I think one of the goals is most likely going to be to develop an equity policy, which is probably going to be an umbrella, like you said, in some ways to all of our policies and may even include a checklist as like a rule or an exhibit or something that goes with it. So I agree. I think that work's going to be done. And instead of trying to like insert that language into every policy right now to just wait until we have that equity policy. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, since Carla's not here, I, the way I heard her say it too was sort of, she was just wondering aloud, I think your explanation of how it already factors in would be good to share with her so she understands how it's working in the policy currently, even though we don't have maybe explicitly, I mean, there is some, some nod to, I mm -hmm. think, in the policy. Um, but so, yeah, I think that I, I like to, I think we're all on the same page with that part. Okay, uh, and then the other piece was um, also um, possibly involving or had some sort of community engagement. Um, I think the engagement that we have is these meetings. We also have um, the board meetings for people to have, you know, conversations around the curriculum. Um, as soon as we have a meeting, like in the curriculum review process, I come back and always do an update on that. Um, with the board. We've only had one for math so far, and that was a month ago, and there was an update on that. So I'll always do that. Um, we do for most curriculum, we do have, um, we solicit family members or, you know, the community to be a part of it. Um, some of them, I, I get a little, you know, like if we're going to be doing like 
financial literacy or, or something like that, that might be a short and quick turnaround, um, a, a quick process, I guess, with a very small team. I think sometimes trying to get, you know, stakeholder involvement in the community, I would, I just wouldn't want it to be a barrier for us to move quickly on something. So um, if it's kind of open as to how we're involving community, great. Versus being um, happy to be a member you, of, of a team. Can you, um, I'm confused. Can you reiterate the community involvement again and why it's being brought up? I wasn't at the meeting. I did read the notes, but I'm a little confused about what, what should be put in the, the, what is what should be and what is what is in there now and what is suggested because i'm i'm fuzzy please uh i'll i'll be honest from my memory of that meeting i just i know carla was just mentioned that it would be nice to have community involvement in it and ben you were there so were you danielle yeah, yeah i think oh i'm sorry go ahead danielle no no it's okay I was just going to say she also noted that the community involvement piece was in the other policy. So I think she was just kind of thinking, like, I think it was just kind of thinking out loud and wondering if we wanted. I think what you said, Jenica, adding a general statement so that it's not like you're pinned down on exactly how it looks, but that you're going to involve the community, I think would probably be sufficient. Just thinking about what Carla was saying, since it is in the other policy, but it's going to come back to December, so we can always like add that piece and then ask her if that covers it too at the mm -hmm. next meeting. Yeah, and again, I don't think she was necessarily requesting a change. She, I, I think just explaining to her what you said, Jenica, in terms of like, this is how I view community engagement in this process mm -hmm. might satisfy her or maybe she would say yeah. she'd want something specific. I'll um, have um, backup for both. <laughs> I will, I will say prepared. this. I will say this, that I, I, again, when we do these policies, we don't have to put every single detail in there, but we can do pattern of practice. If it's our pattern of practice in administrative rules and policy to make sure that the the stakeholders are there, it doesn't need to be defined in a policy. Mm -hmm. And the other part of it is sometimes when we define in policy, we pigeonhole ourselves to something that we may know that is completely right and we need to make a, a judgment decision and we need to make a decision based on whatever it is at that particular time. And putting something in there where we have to do one thing or another can also stop us. So our policies really should be like we have our, our our standard, but the the policy is like our constitution, and then we use things to interpret our policy as the administrative rules or what we do in the administrative rule book or the handbook. So I don't necessarily know if we need to have that, but I don't really. I would also argue that because it is in policy 330, like pretty generally about curriculum development or what does it say? Board encourages practices to seek to engage the broader community in evaluation of curriculum instruction. It almost encompasses selection of textbook because it's more the broader arena, right? Of principle, yeah. philosophy, value. So I, I, I'm just agreeing with you, Tamika, that you, you probably don't need to outline it specifically in this other policy. It just needs to be a practice that we can point to when, you know, when people inquire. Mm -hmm. So um, let's, I forgot, we should actually have a motion for discussion on this. Uh, so moved. Um, the, what's the motion? I think we should. Uh, to discuss. No, no, make the motion to approve this for first reading so we did oh, approve it as a first it reading at the reading. board so a motion i'll make a motion to move it to the december board meeting for a second reading okay and then that way so and i second it okay. all in favor 
no, no, discussion. Oh. Well, no, no, discussion. Now we'll go back to the discussion parts of this. I know where um, uh, the audience, which includes um, Ben, Rob, Robert, and Katie can. Can I, ask one more, can I ask one more question before Ben goes in? Because my my question was just around the rules, because I want to know one, will are there rules that are going to accompany this? And then I have a general question, which we could get to later about rules, like where do the rules live and exist? Like, what, you know, are they part of administrative handbooks? Are they stored? Of, I, so I guess I'm, but this did have several like rules. And my understanding was there would be some rules to go with this or a rule. Is that correct? Again, I look at the, this policy as a constitution and the rules are the bylaws. So mm -hmm. the rules can change with a vote, of course, but the rules can be added and changed within the structure of it. I don't necessarily. Um, yes, there are rules that go with it and they're pretty extensive and, and Jenna and I have been working through, well, Jenna has been working through those. And okay. my thought is that they will live on board docs as well. So right now, Karn and I are in the process of taking anything we've approved and putting it into board docs and then taking it out of the old folder so that we're gonna eventually have that old, that link will have nothing in it <laughs> and everything will be in board docs. And so we would have a space for the rules too. We'd create a book. Okay, and, and, the, and I think we the board has been approving the rules. Mm -hmm. so yeah, come. so we'll bring okay. the rules back. Yeah, okay. we'll bring the rules back. All right, I'm done, thank you. Uh, ben. Okay, so in response to Jenica's concern, what if we said relevant research, including cognitive load theory, and then I also don't think we should add this statement in there where it says allowing for the possibility that in some cases staff may determine that a particular factor is not especially relevant uh, in that paragraph right before the bullet points. Uh, I mean, it's, it's it already says when selecting textbooks and other instructional materials and resources for use in the classroom, consideration shall be given to each of the following factors. So they're being considered. So why do we need that second part where it says allowing for the possibility, you know, that that's, so, that's kind of feedback um, on that. To the first point, I would just say that I don't, if this is a policy that's going to be in place through different superintendents, different school boards, different principals, different teachers, I don't think we should put specific research in there. I well, think we fortunately, should say, you know, theory. Hmm? fortunately, it's a theory. So it, right, it, I don't think we should put theories in there either. Okay, but uh, it is an important aspect of planning instruction. And so that would be so that wouldn't be a policy decision. That would be a curriculum director would say, "Here's the theories and the research that we're going to use as we go through the curriculum review process." Like that would be an administrative decision. That wouldn't be something that would be in policy. I think it should be in policy because it's so important for student achievement. But that's your opinion. No, no, it's scientific fact. But you are leaning on that specific fact. And I'm not going to like say in five years, people are going to walk into this space and think that that's the theory they need to use when they're making curriculum decisions. Like, that, so that if you look at... If you look at the three levels, you look at strategic, you look at tactical, your operational, and you look at tactical. What theories and research you use is very much operational, which is the administrative level, not the strategic board level. So it just wouldn't be something that would go fit into policy. Yeah, but when the board's writing a policy, you know, they're incorporating, uh, you know, guidelines for the administrators to follow. And I, I don't think, I guess I don't see anything wrong with uh you know just you know giving some I mean we can add other things too so, um, I, I don't saying, see that saying using relevant research is a guideline so the problem with relevant research is that it's very subjective it was right which you trust your administrative team to determine what reason I'm not saying we wouldn't use the theory you're talking about well, I'm saying I the, don't want to put it in a policy yeah I mean one of the issues is you know they don't I mean I only learned about cognitive load theory post college. So like teachers aren't being trained or not, they're not being taught about cognitive load theory. And this is like, this is a model that really impacts student achievement. So it kind of deserves a place, I think. Um, so so Ben, the way, hold on. So I, I, Ben, I understand what you're saying, but 
I'm gonna kind of bring it back to what you she just said. So you said that it, it, what happens if this theory is obsolete in six months? Say somebody comes out and says this theory is completely obsolete in six months, and they have found that there were so many holes in the research and the theory that was going to be done, but we put it in here. We have issues. I think there is again i keep trying to stress that we do we want to be able to look at all theories all things without pigeonholing ourselves in categories so that is kind of just my opinion i know danielle you wanted to say something well, i was just going to say i think the venue for you to convince administration about co cognitive low theory is probably not going to be starting with a major policy it's just probably going to be through like discussions and you doing your best to convince them of its relevance and they'll go aha yes i do want to incorporate this and they'll have the room to do that within this policy but i i feel like it's not your it's a sisyphean uh uh a thing that's going on right now is that you're pushing this boulder pill you're just going to keep doing it i'm not sure that i just think that your best bet is to continue to keep saying it in their ears like a you know, I don't know if that helps, but I just, I don't, I think you've made your case and I understand it. Tamika understands it. I think the board understands it. And so I think your last stand is at the second reading to make a move for it and see if you can convince the board. That would be my suggestion. So we don't keep hammering it away at like the, the details of the philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. So then we would push it back for like a first reading again if no well, if you convince the board to not approve the second reading possibly but to your second point ben i i did this line stuck out to me about how staff may determine that a particular factor is not especially relevant like i did have a couple like oh what like when does that come into play why is that there hypothetical what if a staff member determines that like a discriminatory text is like they don't need to consider that factor and we can you know, use this text as a teaching tool or whatever. So like how, why, why, why is that language there? I'm curious why the administrators um, would you, why that language is necessary or we, someone would utilize it. Well, actually, I just think it's redundant. I actually kind of agree with Ben on this. It's, you can use whatever you use and then you can use whatever you don't. It doesn't need to be said, I guess. Um, Jenica, what is your thought process on that? I mean, like we have in here that you use these different forms, theories, whatever it is. If you choose not to use it, you don't have to say I'm not using it. I mean, and no one is going to push you. You just have these theories that you're going to use. And I feel it may be redundant, but please yeah, tell I, me what. I, I agree wholeheartedly that that should be crossed out. I didn't see that in the notes. So I was just going through the notes. But he added in the, you have it crossed out, strike through. I just there. think it's unnecessary because yeah. you can just, uh, I mean. You're agreeing with you, Ben. Yeah, can you well, I, listen, if that's true, then there would be no problem putting cognitive load theory in there. No. Can you point Because to, there uh, is, th the difference between those two, and I'm, I'm saying no, because the difference between those two is you are broadening the other one. So we don't necessarily have to say, you don't have to use something with you putting it in you're saying you have to use something no no i'm saying they could just ignore it but putting it no, in. no it's it's two different things there are two different saying something doesn't have to be used and saying something has to be used are two different things we are just saying you use uh anything you need to to, to achieve this goal and you're taking out and if we don't use it, we have the right to do it. No, you just decide one way or the other. But if that said, use any theory, what? look at the opposite wow. of this. So say if you look at every theory, and then I'm going to cut this pretty, because you're actually a guest. <laughs> but if you put this in your theory, they can use it at any time. But if we put it in writing, that means they at least have to look at it and they shouldn't have to if they know that it's not going to work. So therefore, if it's open and it's you can use whatever theory you want to to figure out this, that's fine. And if you don't, that's fine too. It's all open to interpretation of who we decide to hire as, and right now it's Jenica. 
Okay, last comment. It says, when selecting textbooks and other instructional materials and resource for use in the classroom, considerations shall be given to each of the following factors. It does not mandate usage. So if we put in cognitive load theory, it would not mandate that they use it. But you have to consider it. So then you have to ask every teacher, did you consider cognitive load theory? How, when, why aren't you using it? Theoretically. You well, theoretically, but that never happens. Uh, but we, this is this is the Constitution. So at, literally, you would have to do it. Someone, if we didn't do it, someone can come and say, this is going against your policy and suing you. So what we're really trying to do is make sure that we have everything we possibly need to make sure a policy works without putting specific things in there that may be detrimental to the district. Can I ask you for your assistance, Ben? What is the sentence we're striking through, Ben or Jen Jenica? Can you let me know so I don't lose it? Um, right before the, the bullet points. Yeah, the paragraph before the bullet points. Yeah. So when selecting another materials, that one? Yeah, yeah so starting at allowing, we're going to strike through allowing for Thank you. possibility. Yep. To the so audience. I'm not saying that that's not possible. I'm just saying it's redundant. Okay. No, I just want to make sure I caught it so that when it comes back next month, you don't so they can't choose didn't not to didn't do it. <laughs> okay. It's just, it's repetitive. You know? Hey, I'm going to, Katie or Robert, do you have any um, words on this policy? Okay. Going once, going twice, and a third time. Bomb. Okay. Uh, do we have any other discussion? Uh, do you need anything else, Danielle? No. So we're going to uh, vote with the changes with on the agenda with the changes that we have made to move to the second reading. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Two to zero. Motion is approved. On to the next one. 3.30. Me too. Do you want me to go? Do you want to go through the notes first? Okay. Sure. Um, Excuse me, I'm going to cough for a minute, so I'm still here. <laughs> okay. Um, so the according to the notes, first sentence, add engagement in academic content. Thumbs up. Okay. Um, second paragraph, delete and read as as changed and not. This would be, I would argue that this would be similar to what we just said about cognitive load theory and that it's getting pretty specific around um, cognitive psychology. So I, we could probably get in the same discussion or we could just, um, we could recommend against it and bring it back for the second reading and see what the board thinks. Yeah, and not to say that it's not important because it is, but again, right. then, then we go down, I guess, then, then we should be listing everything like developmental, you mm -hmm. know, there's a, there's a lot in there that we need to be looking at. So, um, yeah. Can we, can we put in the rules? Maybe I'm trying to figure out a little thing. Can we put in the rules some of the things we do and say, these are some of the things, but not limited to in the yeah. sense of we could give a list of what we, we really believe should be looked at and say, but not limited to. So if we needed to add something in, we could, but this is just the suggestion on things that we do look at or have it in an administrator um note or something saying that these are the things that we look at so people will have access to know what we're looking at when we're doing these curriculum uh, mm -hmm. developments or whatever but not have it actually in the policy right and, and one of the rules could be that um, research used for decision making is shared with the board mm -hmm. board or no curriculum mm-hmm mm -hmm. Yeah. I would, yeah, I would say examples of this, right? So you're not really actually even tied to it. Like examples yeah. might include. <laughs> and <laughs> we also don't need to possibly put it that it has to be in a board meeting. It could be just a update or mm -hmm. part of an update. So the board is informed on it, but yeah. yet it still doesn't have to be a formal, you know, voting on it or a discussion unless 
there is something that, you know, someone sees that is problematic, problematic. Mm -hmm. And then they say, wait a minute, I need this to be discussed. And then we can discuss it. It would also make a request for that information or like say Ben wants to have a conversation about it. Like if we're saying this is information the board sort of has access to, right? Mm -hmm. That kind of gives, it opens it up for conversation and Ben to keep making his case. <laughs> All right. Um, the one the one thing I don't want to do is as, as I work with our fellow board member, Ben, I have understood him quite a bit and he has enlightened me on a lot of stuff. I yeah. think he has valid points about how we need to look at things strategically and some things that we do need to look at. I don't argue with any of those things he says. It's just I don't necessarily want them putting in a policy. Mm -hmm. So that is the that. difference. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. So everything shared is extremely important and does need to be looked at, but I do worry about within a policy. So that's why I'm bringing that up. Um, the next one was um, keep curriculum committee updated with changes in curriculum. Um, I guess, I wonder about the curriculum committee. I wonder if it, it could say something, keep the board updated with changes mm -hmm. in curriculum um, that gives us a little leeway. Like what if all of a sudden the next school board decides that they're not going to have committees, they're going to go to, you know, something different, right? So let so, me explain that real quick. We by lot we have to have committees. Now, if we choose to do a, a, a committee of the hall, we still are we still are on committees and we still are obligated to be on those committees. So for well, years we had a committee of the hall, but we still were assigned to different committees. Okay. So, so then, yeah, putting curriculum committee in there would be so would probably be still a little specific. So we would just, right. I mean, we're keeping the board members. That's what right. I'm saying. Keeping yeah. the board updated with yeah. changes in kind of the format. Yep. No, I, I, I think you're getting my wrong point. I think it should say curriculum because it affects curriculum. And even though we may not, like if we go to committee of the whole, there's still a curriculum committee. Okay. And those two people can, and there's still a chair of that committee that can go to the whoever the president is and say, you know what, I am charge of this committee. And I think this needs to be brought to a, a committee of the whole meeting. So there is still a chair, there's still a committee, even if we're in the hall, they still are kind of in charge of that because you're going to have to figure out, it's not up to me to decide what's on a committee of a whole. It's the chairs in those committees deciding what should be brought to the committee of the whole as we, we go through this. So um, I, it doesn't matter one way or the other. I'm just letting you know information and, and Danielle, you, I guess you can weigh in on it, but it's either way, even if it's committee, if it does say, uh, curriculum committee, it still is going to the board because there is still a chair of the committee and there's still a committee that is there. And if that, and the chair still has to re take responsibility, even if it's a committee of the whole, to address the issues that are on their each of their committees. Yep, that makes sense. Um, wondering then, would it be um, committee and board because there could be updates at, at both, you know, a board meeting and a. I'm almost wondering if we just say committee chair and school board. Like the curriculum committee chair and school board. I mean, everybody's going to get the information regardless. I think, yeah, I think you could play with it and we can, okay. we can discuss it at the second reading. If that's, I wonder if it ties into sort of my, my one question or comment about the paragraph on page. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Hold on. Oh, Before okay. we do, let's, let's um go through, finish. But, I'm sorry, Danielle. What I want to do okay. is have her go through her whole synopsis get a motion on the table and then ask questions and discussion. Okay, got it. Okay, so keep, uh, and I'm sorry for interrupting. I'm trying to do this That's cool. the orderly way. Keep it moving. <laughs> Jenica. Okay, um, number six, page two was the next item on there. 
um, when it is demonstrated that tech. Um, I, yeah, tech I know what I know what Ben was saying. Um, yes, we we should move forward with that. What is it though? It's kind of See, my wondering was how can, how are we measuring that? And like, I was kind of concerned. Excuse like, me, hold on. Can you explain yeah. what it is? Again, I wasn't at the board meeting. I read it, but I really want a little bit more information yeah. on this. This is uh, committee. When it is demonstrated that technology and computer literacy improve instruction. So sometimes like when you, when you think about um, putting technology into um, curriculum or utilizing a technology-based curriculum, you wanna just make sure that it's again, a high quality you know, instructional resource. So it kind of ties back into what we're already doing. So we wouldn't want to pick something that isn't um, supporting that. So I, I just, I and I think one of the, I'm just clarifying, because I think one of the things Ben, not asking a question, just clarifying. One of the ben, the things that Ben has enlightened me on is that we might have all technology, but does it directly impact the outcomes of learning? And is that what this is saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's right. getting after. Yep. All right, go on. Um, and then paragraph after no, oh, staff members have the opportunity to uh, appeal curricular changes and actions curriculum committee appeal. Um, and then um, Allison brought up the district um, complaint process. And so my wondering was, do we want to keep it consistent with utilizing the district complaint process, or do we need to have something different? So I think that would be more of a discussion point um, on how that should be handled, but. And I think a compromise perhaps um, would be if, you know, if Ben wants to make sure that it's clearly noted in here that staff have a process to appeal, to just note that staff can use the district complaint process. Because mm -hmm. I don't think we'd want to use a different, but just making it really clear. Yeah, that'd be my thought. Okay. So those were the items. And then Carla mentioned that the culturally culturally relevant um, teaching is already in, in this policy. Yep. All right, can I have a motion to um, move this to the second reading? Yes, so moved. And I will second that. Um, now we're, we're, we're gonna pull it out for discussion to our audience, Ben and uh Katie Ben do you have any thoughts on I know you do so go right ahead wait so I thought you guys had to go first no it's oh. the audience and then oh, it's because remember you're an audience right now oh no I, I know I know. Ben, though. <laughs> I know that's Ben when Ben when Ben when he gets so special I, treatment I think there was a part that was left out. So in the paragraph following uh, number five on the first page, uh, it should say in partnership with the teachers, uh, the district administrator shall develop a district curriculum plan. So my, the way that I read that is that if I'm developing and implementing a district curriculum plan, that that would be the district re curriculum review process, which would include teachers. Yeah, so I just want it written down. So, so if I write it the way you're saying it, it sounds like the teachers are going to create the plan. No, they're gonna be, they're doing it in partnership with the district administrator. Right, so they're, they're, so the way I'm reading it is the district administrator or appropriate license designee, which would be the teaching and learning person, shall right. develop and implement a district curriculum plan, plan to structure curriculum development. So that means Jenica would create a plan that says we have this curriculum review process. These are how many stakeholders are involved. This is how the teachers are involved. And she would bring that plan to the board. I think if we put the teacher sentence in here, it sounds like the teachers are helping her create that plan. I think they should. Like, so I would just maybe, disagree on that. Maybe, maybe we could be uh, more specific. Uh, we could say with the appropriate grade level and subject area teachers, because uh, right, I mean, they're not, you know, a third grade teacher is not going to do much with the seventh grade curriculum. But yeah, I guess we could be more specific in partnership with the appropriate grade level and subject area teachers. 
And I'm just reading it differently than you because I'm reading it like the next step is what you're talking about. So like the first Clarify step would be like drafting the plan and then the next step would be the teachers being a part of the committee that helps select the curriculum. But they wouldn't draft the, like the curriculum review cycle wasn't put together by teachers. It was put together by all the teaching and learning directors. Yeah, the seven, districts seven that years put that cycle. together. So I don't know if we're just reading it differently. And I guess when I, what are your thoughts? Yeah. When I think of like district curriculum plan, I think about the, the cycles that we go through mm -hmm. planning that all out for multiple years based on off of what's coming out of DPI. Mm -hmm. um, so when we think about our big district curriculum plan and how it's kind of like at, at this level um, and then it goes on to say, you know, to structure the curriculum development. When are we going to do these curriculum reviews? Um, how are we going to do that? What timing, you know, around it? Um, and then the evaluation of that and then the improvement process. So that's kind of what we do um, going through our whole like high quality instructional partners curriculum review process that we have. Um, and then teachers are involved in the in that process. So I was seeing it the same way that you were. <laughs> so I guess I don't see how it'd be a problem to involve teachers in part of that process, at least. I mean, you know, you have the six through eight curriculum. And if they're going to have going to, you know, their seven year cycle, or I can't remember what it is, five year? Seven years? Um, it's it's five, well, it depends. It's five years, but it also depends on when things come out from DPI because DPI can be two years yeah. late and you're late. So it's, you know. Well, I mean, just having content level experts, you know, part of those planning meetings, I, I, I don't see how, you know, that would be a problem because, I mean, you're talking with people that are directly, you know, implementing the curriculum. So, I mean, I'm not saying that, yeah. you know, again, I'm not saying that the third grade teachers are going to be part of the seventh grade meeting. No, and I think we're just talking about two different things. So I think we're talking about, here's the timeline, here's when we review what, here's when we're gonna have our committee meetings, here's when, like we're talking about that planning, not the actual content area, like now we're reviewing the curriculum planning. I think we're just talking about two different things. Right, because our, our math leads and all of that are actually leading a lot of the work um, that's happening at those meetings. Mm -hmm. um, but they didn't determine like the timeline and the no, schedule no, and the no. and the coverage and right those which pieces. is what I'm looking at is this planning is like the nut like the mapping it out. Is that what you're okay. saying? Ben? Well, if that's, the, if that's the case, sorry. No, I'm just asking if that's what you're saying. You want teachers involved in the content part of the curriculum planning, not. I think I think it's a yeah. Okay, if, if that's oh, cool. if we're going to read it like that, if we're going to read it like that, I guess I would suggest putting a number down. So we have one through six. Mm -hmm. And then I would suggest putting the number down seven, I guess that teachers are involved in the adoption, uh, the evaluation <clears throat> of their specific curriculum. So if it's, you know, the third grade teachers, and they're doing math that year, well, they're they're focusing on you know the math curriculum then. Uh, so I'm looking at and and my, like I'm kind of looking at that as number one at the very top. Communication and coordination among grade level and subject area teachers should be emphasized whenever oh, curriculum is developed at, and evaluated. Yeah, sorry, I guess I was looking on the second page. We could restate something like that in the lower part if that's what you're saying. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, we can do something like that. But if we're thinking about evaluation, then we also have to think, you know, progress monitoring of it, right? Is it right. working? So I think communication and coordination is nice, but uh, it needs to be, yeah, they need to be part of the evaluation process and they need to have more of a say of um, what is being um well, evaluated their curriculum, but also what's being evaluated as the new curriculum, could, and then also have a say in that adoption process. Could so you that's add? What trying, that's what I was trying to get at in the, mm -hmm, the paragraph mm -hmm. below five, yeah. where it's in partnership with the teachers. So I thought that kind of summarized it, but 
if again, if, if that's the way we're reading it, that, that's fine. Um, I'll have to type something else out then. Um, so you're looking at number one, like adding evaluation? Uh, I uh, see that's the thing where, again, I was under the impression oh, of reading that paragraph differently. So I'd, I would have to type up something else and put it in an uh, appropriate spot. And I, I wish I wish we would have said this at the last meeting. And I'm sorry I didn't catch it. Yeah. Um, ben, I think we could fit it in somewhere in that one through five because it does talk about curriculum and instruction program development should be a um, a participatory process with within the district, and then maybe one of those bullet points kind of hits at some of that. Um, yeah, and maybe instead of saying, yeah, maybe something. Well, I'd be happy to draft something and share it and we can kind of go back and forth. If Hold on a minute. Um, Danielle, go ahead. I was just saying, could you add teachers to the second point? Somehow incorporate teachers and staff because that directly says evaluation of curriculum and instruction and generating mm -hmm. ideas for improvement. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put some, I'm, put, I'm adding some notes so that Jenica and, and Ben can kind of to add, like you were saying, maybe create an additional statement or add something. So I'm adding some notes in there. So you guys will So have do, that. with this one, do we want to hold it to, off for a policy meeting again and not send it to a second reading? Because I, I, of the, I think well, I still have a, probably... I still have a question about this policy. That's not right. Right. Good. That's, yeah. but I'm just saying, even with this, we can still answer your question to, I mean, and go on your question, but I'm saying, is this big enough that we just have a discussion about this and not necessarily put it to the second reading? That's, a, that's I just, a, I don't, you don't have to answer that now, but I just want to put that out there if so, um, all right. I was just going to say, worst case scenario, if it went to a second reading, it could go back to policy. Yeah, I'd appreciate. But I'm trying. We we're trying to avoid that, so I don't want it to go back. What I I really don't want to do is have policies go back to the board and then back to curriculum. If there, it's going it to stay curriculum. Approved. Let's keep it in <laughs> curriculum until we, you know, knock it all out. If it's good enough, except for the changes a couple of changes that we need or adding a couple of words, then it can go to the board. Um, go ahead. Um, Daniel. Danielle had something, right? Um, wait, yeah. Ben, are you done? Because then I can- well, I, would, I just want to talk about what you just said. I would appreciate that just because uh, I do wish we would have, if we were going to read it the way we're saying we're reading that, I wish we would have said that last board meeting, no one's fault, but it would be nice if we had time to type something up, get it approved by policy to move for the second reading. So I, I agree with Tamika. I didn't say I wanted to or not. I just well, said I agree with your suggestion. I didn't suggest it. I, I just agree with it your thoughts. There. I agree okay, with you. Okay, we're going to move it. Katie, do you have anything? Or Kelly? Oh, we're actually, move it to the there was one you've there. exceeded your three minutes I'm yeah but there, there, was, there was one more there was one more uh thing that was brought up about the appeal process um i think we should just write it out so that way teachers feel like you know it, again uh what if you have a teacher that's like hey you know i know that this curriculum is going to be the best it's uh you know it's based on science it's going to improve student outcomes and it's really really important that the superintendent hears me that's really important. And again, the superintendent can still say no. They can be like, no, not going to happen. And then it's done, right? But it is important that they're heard uh, because they're advocating for kids. But so ben, so ben, I I have, hold on. Yeah. I have told Ben this before, and that process is there. Well, they I know. I just want to written. Wait, let me yeah, finish. We, they go to the principal. If they the principal doesn't like it, they will go to the superintendent if they don't like what the superintendent says they can appeal to the board but that should not be a separate thing it is see what our policy is on appealing so yes we can you ben you're saying add just a specific line that says use the district complaint process i just wanted to say if you if, if staff members have the opportunity to appeal actions or inactions so they can also appeal inactions so like let's say a teacher's like hey 
I really want CUDA software and the principal says no. So okay, can I say that the, through the district complaint process? I but I, I want I want it specifically to say action or inaction somewhere. Sure. sure. So and now I would, and I would I like am it going to outline. But yeah, yes, I'm going to disagree fine. with this, and okay. I won't I won't put that up for discussion. He can bring it up into the board meeting, okay. but I literally think that if we say there's an appeal process there's an appeal process and that's that it's that's all that needs to be said they will see that if you it, maybe if you want to say agreement or disagreement appeal process i just don't want a big action or inaction. paragraph on it per, I made action, action or inaction I okay. made uh go ahead um I we are closing out the uh Hey, visitor participation. <laughs> I'm going to the back. I'll see you guys later. Let me know what happens. <laughs> well, no, I, okay. Well, no, no, that's okay. No, no, no. no. sorry, sorry. No, 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 go. I'll, I'll go stop. ahead, Danielle. I'm, try, I'm just trying to understand the logic between this appeal process. Like, where does it happen? So, we administration makes decisions, board approves some, you know, curriculum changes if that's what's called for. And then you have a teacher like yourself who says, well, we're not using hypothetically this theory or this curriculum and I think this is better so is it after a curriculum has been approved and is beginning to be implemented that a teacher then says I think we should change it up or is it in the collaboration process where Jenica is creating her work groups and seeking input so I'm I just logistically I don't really under, understand how that's like a formal complaint process versus a conversation so I think you know, what, ends up, what ends up happening is before we even approve it, Jenica is going to tell them what they have decided on what the curriculum is. Yeah. Am I correct? That's how it works. Like we have gone through everything and we've decided that this is what the curriculum is. Mm -hmm. Now that is where they, I believe they should start their appeal process because that is a decision that administrators have made. Mm -hmm. It can go all the way up through the board, but when it's on the agenda, the board can also listen to both sides. So it could stop at 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 uh, at Allison or the superintendent saying, you know what, we have to rethink this. I think they bring up valid points, but we have not approved it yet, so it doesn't have to involve the board because it's still administrative. I think. Any decision, because that is a decision that you're making, just because it hasn't been technically approved yet, it doesn't need to be approved because you've already made the decision. Mm -hmm. And we are going to follow your, you know, we're going to follow your suggestion. So I think it I is before our, our board decision, but after the administration has made a decision. I guess I would just, can I just say, I just, I would hope that what we're working towards is an environment where teachers feel like they can be heard and voice their opinions. My thought is if you get to the point where a teacher needs to file an appeal against a curriculum decision that's being made is it's probably not going anywhere because a lot of people have put time and effort into thinking about what curriculum we're going to do. And it's, it seems like it's just likely to cause more strife or conflict. And so that that's, that's that's what how I'm processing what you're you're getting at. I understand that I think what you're trying to do is create an avenue for teachers to feel like they can be heard without repercussion. And I think we should do that. I just not sure this is the process that I would well, endorse. Real, real quick, curriculum also includes things other than the like the main curriculum we use. So like for like CUDA software could be considered part of the curriculum or Alex could be considered part of the curriculum. And so a teacher might say, hey, look, I really, because maybe illustrative math does not give my students enough practice. I really need some CUDA software or I need some IXL or in this now I need Alex, right? We have Alex now. Yeah. Well, I was told no when I was teaching at Glen Hills. I need, like I wanted it and it would have given my students a lot of practice and there was nothing I could do. And so that's an action. And so I'm not, I mean, this, yeah, sure. It couldn't be like, I would definitely appeal certain curricular decisions uh, in, you know, that have been made across the U S or whatever, but um, you might lose that for sure. Right. But in, in the case of like, 
adopting some sort of resource, uh, this would give them an avenue of like, okay, so actually, I, I do have somewhat of an avenue, you know, if my principal doesn't agree with me, great, maybe my curriculum director will agree with me, or great, if not, maybe the superintendent will agree with me. So it's, it's something more along those lines. Cool. So curriculum could include things other than that, like, you know, like resources. The use the resources. Mm -hmm. So I asked, um, I think I asked you, Jenica, did I just, I asked somebody this, I don't remember which one. Um, what goes into figuring out if something is relevant? Because Ben, again, Ben, oh, yeah, had, we had a discussion a little bit, he was informing me on some of the things. And I, I do have an issue where it's twofold. Number one, if a teacher thinks that this will help them, I get it. But I also look at, and then it should be available to anybody who wants to use it. But if a teacher wants this particular thing and it's not cost effective and nobody else is going to use it, even though they, I don't, no matter what, I don't see that happening because it's just not effective for everything. I mean, well, sorry, go on. No, no. And I get what you're saying. So I, that's where I am like this on this particular thing, because I do want them to be able to plead their case if a uh, principal, but I also asked, what is the likelihood that somebody says no on something? Right. And it's rare that they say no on something. I don't know if it's rare. I, what well, teachers, I, I said, according to what our administrator teachers, said, what that, teachers end up uh, doing rare. is they start spending their own money because they want the product. So all I'm saying is, is one, administrators could just all say no, right? You could go up the ladder and they all say no and well, you're out of luck. Okay, and that's just the way it is. But it does give the teacher a voice and it does allow them to state their case. So that way they don't have to pay $300 for a classroom uh, set of something, you know? Um, if they say no, they say no, and it, they're still going right. to have to pay. So that's what I'm saying. I, just don't, no. I don't get where the, I don't well, know. Go I'm ahead, saying, Danielle. I think oh, no. Nope, sorry. I do still have one question about this policy when we're ready. I'm just so, saying administrators can still say no, but okay. instead of having one say no, now you have three. All right, you made your case, Ben. Um, you. uh Allison. Um, uh, I don't even know where I am. Danielle, so what we have to do is figure out what parts of this we're okay with sending to the second um, reading and what parts we are not okay with sending to the second reading. Well, I'm, I'm, yeah. can I, I, cause I had a pretty big, like mine sort of high level, like philosophy of it all. And I need to understand it more before I, uh, would you know would want to hear it as a second reading so that's I was looking for more information it's in the notes right about this paragraph after number six that just very explicitly says the board makes decisions to add or move district programs and areas of studies subject to limitations and expectations defined in this policy which there are none as far as I can tell we're not defining well it's oh sorry Subject to limitations and expectations defined in this policy, administration has the authority to approve and implement revisions to various curriculum guides created for various subject areas within the programs and among the various courses and areas of studies that have been approved by the board, district administrator, building principals may also decide without board approval whether a particular course, class, or curricular activity will be offered in a given trimester, term, or school year. So part of this is my ignorance as to um where the delegation of responsibility lies in these things but it sounds as if you you may carve out certain things within a policy to say this needs to go to the board for approval and i'm not familiar with how other districts kind of go at this so part of this my novice and not understanding that but um you know like it makes me think about like uh the rearranging of music right which w was um there was confusion about sort of how that should have proceeded, I think it's fair to say through the administration and the board at the time that it happened. Um, and so thinking about that in the future, right? Mm -hmm. Like 
I'm just trying to understand what this means to you guys as administrators and what it should mean for us as a board and whether we should be carving out it should be more specific or not specific and sort of why this paragraph exists, how it functions, which is like kind of so, a big question. So, so I have a, a, a Jenica, with Danielle bringing that up, I wanted to ask a couple of questions because she does, she hits a nerve with something. When we implemented, I don't remember if it was reading, writing workshop or reading, the curriculum itself I, this is what you guys sold us was overall good, but there was aspects of it that you needed to change or you wanted to change mm -hmm. to better the curriculum. So I guess we did the, the overall basis of what the curriculum stands for, but we found things that we could implement mm -hmm. and change into the curriculum that worked for our school. Okay. So that's one part of how I see you guys changing things without the board approval, you know, in certain aspects of it, because it's still reading, writing workshop, but you're taking modules and not doing them and doing them. So that is one way I see this. But the other part of that is, is also what Danielle said in regards to bigger changes, especially when it comes like to the music department, that was a departmental change that affected everything. And we really didn't have too much of a say in it. Or resource yeah. period, Tamika, like resource, right? Right. Like these things, does this fall under that? Yeah, I, I see that as more as programming, but I think okay. when you're talking about, you know, what you're talking, the music piece, I do think that last sentence there, um, like a, a course or class or, you know, that might need to be looked at that piece. I, I, I hear what you're saying with that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's nice to have a little flexibility within the curriculum guides. Um, if we do like new standards come out, but we don't have a curriculum review process and some people want to start yeah, adding some new things in um, or like, you know, Ben was talking about um, letting teachers try some different things. Like currently our seventh grade team wanted to, we took them to Greenfield High School or middle school and they saw Desmos and were, were interested in it. So they're trying a round of it, right? To see yeah. if that's something that they're- Desmos is amazing, yeah. Or it's, like what you said. Oh wait, we got an approval <laughs> of Ben. It's up for oh. well, it's, well, I just use it as a graphing calculator, but it's a very nice graphing calculator. Yeah. But yeah, there's some cool things. There's some cool things you can do. You can make your own programs and stuff like that. So yeah, but this is why I'm, I think, Danielle, can you go into a little more depth with your time? Yeah. So, so I guess I don't want to get into the business of, of it's like, I don't want to micromanage those, those parts of it. But when something like music, again, as the example comes up, it, it becomes like a, an issue where if we're not informed about something like that, and then the community finds out first versus us, et cetera, and it becomes more of like a, a conflict than I think it needs to be. So it's hard. So for me, I, I would like to understand where those boundaries lie. And maybe I need to work on understanding just generally, I don't know if the, the law is clear, statutes are clear. I think it, I think this may be one of those gray areas. And so it may serve us to define those, to carve out those specifics more. So I agree. We're not my, trying, not um unknowingly attempting to micromanage, you know. So I think clear about clear expectations here would help the community and the board. So I guess that's what I'm what I would like to see a little bit more of in this policy. Yeah, because so I'm not going you. back to you, Ben, because <laughs> we're going to, um, I believe that we're going to, I believe we're going to um, table. I oh, yeah. think can we I should actually, are you still talking? Yeah, can I just go off of what Daniel just, yeah, no. just said, please? Just 30 seconds to make it. Okay, so th that is one of the reasons why I put in the appeal process there, because what if you decide that, like a teacher decides to teach like you know, maybe outdoor sports is a class they just wanted to run or something like that. And I know that's more of a high school thing, but let's just say they have a course that they wanted to run. You know, there was determined, okay, the enrollment isn't high enough. I just think there should be like some sort of like, they can come to the board and, you know, give their little spiel of why it shouldn't be eliminated. But they can do that in the process of of going to the principal and then going to the superintendent. Well, there it, says, it says you don't need board approval. So it's just saying that they can it, do it. 
Right. But they still can. We don't need board approval, but we can obviously stop something if it does, if we don't like it. So they might not be approval by the board, but we can actually implement something to stop something easily. Mm -hmm. Okay. Back to, I think, uh, who was, oh, you, uh, Allison, sorry. I just wanted to say, so uh, you guys were talking about tabling it, but just to Danielle's point and what everybody was saying, I think we almost divide this in half. Like, so that this paragraph has like one point about, so we're adding phonics to the reading curriculum because our second graders need phonics. Clearly that's not going to have to go to the board, but if it's like a structural, like a big, like what you're saying, like the music example, that at least there's some sort of, um, even if it's not approval, like that it has to be communicated, that it has to be shared, that something. So I think we divide it into like two different yeah. things. I was going to use those words. words. Like yeah. find the words to use if yeah. it's departmental or if it's just a yeah. program and yeah. define those, yeah. what considers department or a program. Agreed. Yeah, I'm open to moving this, continuing to, to keep this moving forward because I don't want to, this is one of the ones where it's like, we don't have it or was this just an urgent policy? This that was one that we don't have, yeah. Right, so I don't, I don't want to unnecessarily post, like keep, <laughs> keep delaying this, but I would... I mean, I think I think we all sort of understand what we want to see coming out of this. So if we can get there before, if it can get okay. there, December board okay. meeting, I'd be open to reviewing it, right? And and then that can go. Ben, can you give any suggestions or talk to Allison or Jenica, probably Jenica, on the paragraphs or things that you want to discuss, and then we can bring it to the second reading. And yeah, we don't need to give up a rough draft. Um, Jenica, you tell him. <laughs> um, um, bef definitely before the Friday before the board right. meeting. I don't think we need you to rewrite the whole policy, Ben. No, <laughs> just there's that one paragraph. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, Ben, I thought we were just adding something about the collaboration piece, and then we're breaking yeah. up the last paragraph. That ben, that, like I said again, have Ben talk to Jenica, you guys. We'll connect. Cash it out and I connect. Can. And then that will go into the the um the met or the update and the yeah. agenda yeah. for the Friday yeah. before the board meeting. Yep. Yeah. Sounds good. Great. I think we got through all but we got oh, through all of them, didn't yeah, we? we did. That was yeah, that was it. So let's vote. I need a vote on this though. <laughs> um we so all in favor of moving this policy to um with changes and um with changes to the December board meeting. Aye. Aye. Oh my goodness, we got through this. I am excited. Um <laughs> Katie, thank you. Um let me go back to my agenda. I guess hold on. Visitor participation, I think, on this one. Uh, yep. Um, hold on. I think we've had enough visitor. No, nope, we got. I'm just kidding. Ben, no, we, we have some discretion. <laughs> There's some discretion. <laughs> oh no! Don't we have to go through the board governance policies? Oh, you know what? Actually, oh. we talked about doing a doodle poll for that, so we yeah, kind of already we... talked about it at the last meeting. I'm sorry. We should Can have gotten it. So uh, we need to make a motion to. Um, because we approved Sorry. the agenda, so we need to take a motion to take it off the agenda. Well, let's just dis let's just discuss it. I, I, I right. I think that um, we need uh, we need to get everybody's availability to have a a proper discussion about it. So the first step would be a doodle, right? Yep. Okay. Done. Okay, that was a discussion. We're not really <laughs> taking action on this. Yeah. Because um, there's no action to take. Okay. So we are on, we have given a recommendation. Uh, we're on visitor participation. A visitor may speak on any non-agenda item at this time. State okay. law and or board policy may limit the school board's response. Katie, Ben, do you have anything to say? There's lots of things, but. Uh, on a non-agenda item. I Yeah, I, let's talk about cognitive load. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so. <laughs> I'll talk, I'm going to go to the WAC. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Katie? I don't want to go to bed. You're going to go to the WAC. I know. The young people. Were... <laughs> he just left. <laughs> I know. Yeah, he did. Katie, anything? Going once? 
going twice. And I'm going to do one more time, a third time. Visitor participation is closed. I Don't need, move. we're on 4A. <laughs> we need a motion to adjourn. So moved. And high fives to everybody. High fives. Good job. All right. <laughs> Thank you. I will talk to you guys later. Danielle, Thanks, I need to talk to you for two seconds.